for goal posts, uh, different rules as far as motion and guys moving before the snap. So it's all fun. It's great. It's great for the fans. It's a great atmosphere. It keeps everybody interested, even the avid fan, the sometimes fan, can come into a, an IFL game, a Colorado Crush game, and enjoy themselves because there's going to be music pumping. There's going to be fans cheering. They're going to have the cheerleaders out. In fact, I got the cheerleaders at the table next to me right now doing some promotional stuff, signing autographs for the kids. It's all love out here at the Colorado Crush football. Uh, we got the fans going by. They're all ready. They're excited. They love their team. It's good stuff, and I'm glad to be a part of it with Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. All right, other games that have already gone final so far this season. On the 17th of February, there were two games that were played. The Green Bay Blizzard beat the Cedar Rapids Titans 46-13, to and the Arizona Rattlers fell to the Sioux Falls Storm 40-29. to On February 18th, Saturday, the Iowa Barnstormers fell to Wichita Falls Nighthawks 68-53. On Thursday, the 23rd of February, the Green Bay Blizzard fell to the Spokane Empire 34-31. That was a close game. We'll have to check in to see when they play next later in the season and see how they're going for sure. On Saturday the 25th, so yesterday, uh, the Sioux Falls Storm took on the Cedar Rapids Titans. They won that contest 51-26. And also yesterday, the Wichita Falls Nighthawks took on the Nebraska Danger, and they won that contest 65-48. So again, looking at the scores, it's high-scoring games. High-scoring games. A lot of energy, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. You can't be beat. Make it out to a game. Uh, if you didn't make it out to a day, out today, make it out to another game. You're going to enjoy it, I promise. And if you want to, you know, again, watch a game before you buy tickets, go to the YouTube channel for the IFL. Watch a game. Check out any of them. It will get you out to a game in your local area. Today, the 26th, we have the home opener for the Colorado Crush as they are taking on the Salt Lake screaming eagles and that is why we are here today that is exciting stuff big game stuff and also today the arizona rattlers are taking on the iowa barnstormers so that kind of catches everybody up on the schedule what's happened so far um, and where everybody is at as far as that goes now with that being said that means there are current standings Um, each conference already has you know some wins and losses so where does everybody rank where does that fall well, let's check it out. So if you go down to the IFL homepage, I'm scrolling down through it right now. Oh, uh, about a little over halfway down the page, you're going to see it says standings. It's going to be broken up by the United Conference and the Intense Conference. Under there, you can see Sioux Falls has played two games, Wichita Falls two games, Green Bay has played two games, Iowa's played one, Cedar Rapids has played two games already. And in the intense conference, Spokane's played one game, Nebraska's played two. This is Colorado's first game, so they're sitting at 0-0 zero zero still. Uh, the Rattlers have played one game, and they're playing again today. And the Salt Lake Screaming Eagles have already played, and they are playing their second game today. So as things go right now, Sioux Falls Storm, they are at the top, tied with Wichita Falls of the United Conference, sitting at 2-0. and oh and the top of the intense conference sitting all by themselves at 1-0 currently early in the season is the Spokane Empire. Now, again, you guys may not know a lot about the IFL. You might be going, but wait a second, KP, is that real football? I got all these questions. I don't know about it yet. It's indoor game. It's different. Um, You might be biased because you're an outdoor football fan. Let me tell you something. Okay, I spent 20 years of my life playing outdoor football. My grandfather, Warren Mitchell, spent 50 years of his life coaching high school football, high school athletics in the state of Colorado. I am an outdoor football, born and raised, love the game. This is still football. This is still real football. They hit every bit as hard as the outdoor game. It is every bit as exciting as the outdoor game. In fact, I would venture to say it's a little more exciting because you're a little closer. There are less people. You're a little more on top of the game. Uh, Players, receivers are allowed to be in motion moving towards the line of scrimmage before the snap of the ball. Um, 
it's something that you have to experience to understand. You can't get the full feel of watching an indoor football game from your couch. You just can't. It's not going to happen. You can, if you're a football fan, you can enjoy the game, but to get the full feel of the atmosphere, the excitement, and everything that they have to offer for the fans, you've got to come out. You've got to catch a game. No matter what city you're in, if you're traveling through one of the 10 cities that have a team, if you've got uh, vacation plans to go see family, and they're in one of those cities, and it's between now and June at the end of the season, try and catch a game on Sundays. Try and catch one of the 16 regular season games, whether it's home or away. Do your thing. Have some fun. Take the family out. It's, it, it's not even expensive. You can get tickets to these games for as little as $10 a game. The expensive tickets are about 50 bucks a game, a little more than that. So not pricey at all. Concessions are not as pricey as the NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA stadiums. So you can bring out the whole family and have a good time for sure. Uh, you know what? Let's get into uh, the interview with co-owner Ray Austin uh, real quick. See what he had to say before the game today. All right, this is your boy KP here with Ray Austin, the co-founder of Project Franchise, the co-owner of Your Colorado Crush. Mr. Austin, tell us a little bit about what you expect from this season. Oh, my gosh. I, I, uh, with Coach Jefferson, I'm, I, I don't expect anything but uh, uh, wins. Uh, coach Jefferson has been a great coach. I've, I've seen him for a while. He was, he was an excellent choice uh, for, the, for the Crush. Um, I have no doubt that it's going to be an awesome game tonight. Definitely. We're all looking for a good one. I know this is the first season yep. of the Project Franchise. Tell everybody who doesn't know a little bit about what exactly that is. Oh, wow, man. Project Franchise is a group of guys, it's, and, and it's uh, six co-founders, and we all had an idea to uh, have a first fan-run football team. We all did it in different ways. Uh, we, we basically just met each other about two years ago. And we all got together with, with different concepts, but they all kind of meshed to go, uh, together well. And we decided to all come together instead of uh, competing against each other. We all came together and we created Project Franchise, which is the first ever fan-run football team. And what that is is we're allowing our fans to call our plays, pick our logo, pick our players, even the coach. We want to give the fans the opportunity to actually be a part of a, foot, a professional football organization. That is awesome. I love the idea of the fan being involved. You hear a lot of almost negativity about that in some of the other leagues out there. So the idea that the IFL is taking this on and, you know, running with it, being the, the uh, first yeah, the pioneers. to go with it Absolutely. is pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, now, this is a team I was talking to Coach Jefferson. You guys have been in the playoffs the last six years. Do you see something similar like that this season? 100%. I think he's got a great uh, team. I've, I've actually checked them out on film. Um, they have they have the experience to do it. They have the coaching staff, is which I'm actually very uh, uh, impressed by. I, 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 there, there is no doubt in my mind that this team will be back into the playoffs. Awesome. I thank you for your time. The thank Crush, you. thank you. Go Crush. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go Crush. All right. That was co-owner Ray Austin. Uh, we caught up with him a little bit before the game there. A great guy, uh, very enthusiastic, very happy about what the team has going on, looking forward as Project Franchise takes over this season. Um, it's, it's just nothing but good things. I see positive things coming. Everybody who's involved is super energetic. They're super focused. Um, just good people, and it's good to see. Uh, if you want to follow the show, definitely check us out. Uh, we are, you can check us out through, you can get our app on the Google Play Store, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. You can um, check us out on Facebook, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. We're on Twitter as well, Real Deal KVP. And there is a Google Plus community also for Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. Um, so definitely check us out. We'll be covering the team. We'll be doing a lot of big things throughout the season, and um, it's just great. I mean, I, I, I can't wish to be anywhere else right now. I'm happy where I'm at. Um, I just got word from Tom Carter. He will be on his way here shortly. Hopefully we'll be able to get Patrick Deese on this week. If not, we will get him on for another game for sure um, because there's some stuff we definitely want to talk to him about 
the fan app that allows you to vote and do different things during the game. We'll have him come on and explain those things um, when he's available. Hopefully he's able to come out. All right, joining us right now, we have Tom Carter of the Colorado Eagles. Uh, Mr. Carter, why don't you tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do with the team? So I'm the president of the Salt Lake Screaming Eagles. We're the opponent here in Colorado today. Um, but we're all one organization, right? So Project Franchise Fanchise owns both organizations, so we all work together to, to get things going and make sure we're having a great time. Definitely. That's awesome. So how does that work with um, you guys owning both teams? That's a little unique. It's unique. It's unique. So it's kind of like a big brother, little brother situation, but we're really twins. You know, the, uh, the Crush have been in the league for a long time, and it's a good organization as, as the ownership group took over uh, operations here. It's been an opportunity to kind of rebuild the brand and get things going. It's got a great fan base here, and it's been fantastic to... Uh, <laughs> to see the, the crowds come out and be supportive. Salt Lake, we're an expansion team. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, we're a, a full-fledged franchise there. Where our fans, even today, at the game here, who are following either fans here who came to the, the game in Colorado or fans who are watching back in Salt Lake are calling the place. Um, you know, the, the offensive coordinator for the, the Screaming Eagles are fans. Right. And so it's, uh, you know, as we integrate... A full franchise model here in Colorado. It's going to be really exciting. So a fan versus fan game, and that will happen a few weeks into the season. Definitely. It seems very exciting. It's something I'm very interested in, something I'm, I'm wanting to learn more about for sure. Uh, did you catch the beginning of the game? I did. I watched the first two drives. How how'd, the, how'd they go? So uh, Colorado did great. They, they marched down the field. Our guys missed a few, uh, missed a few plays, and that was frustrating. And then uh, so they scored seven, and then... Uh, our guys got the ball and we marched down the field, scored, uh, scored six. We missed the extra point, but you know our offensive coordinators all around the country did uh, all around the world did a great job getting the plays in. So we're, you know, from from what I can tell now, you can always respond to the crowd. We're still tight. Well, we're down by one. We missed the extra point, but you know, the game's going to be tight. I think through uh, you know our the benefit we have is we uh, Salt Lake's played a game, and right? So you know, we'll get those first game nerves out. You're, you're able to um, figure each other out. And, the speed of the game is different from when you're in a training facility than when you're in a, when you're in the arena, and it's different when you're uh, practicing alone than when you play in front of a crowd. There's a great crowd here in Fort Collins today, so we're, uh, you know, we've been able to do that. We played that home game in front of 8,000 people in, in at the Maverick Center last uh, two, last week, and so here coming here in the front of a good crowd, the guy, our guys are already used to that. These guys are going to get used to that. Uh, the Colorado guys are used to that. Awesome, awesome. So looking more long term. Where do you see Project Franchise and Salt Lake going? So, in the long term, we view the, the fan play calling the fan interactivity as the, the wave of the future. Um, we think that within a year, you know, the whole IFL will be doing this. Um, and, it, and the name will change from indoor football to interact. And, nice. and because, you know, if you look at everything from your college team to your favorite, uh, your favorite NFL team, your favorite baseball team, your favorite basketball team, what do fans want more than anything? They want access. Right. Right? I mean, even if you watch the Oscars tonight, people want access. Access. You watch the red carpet show. People are interviewing. They do all that stuff. And what we're just saying is instead of just keeping them at arm distance with access, let's give them as much access as possible. Fans chose our players. They designed our uniforms. chose the mascot name. Today, at this game, uh, Colorado Crush fans will choose the mascot name for, for this team. And so to give them that kind of access is what fans just crave. And so we, we believe that what's going to start in Salt Lake City and then grow to, to Fort Collins will continue through all the IFL and, and branch off into all sports. And um, you know, it may take some time for other sports to catch up to what we're doing, but we're, we're developing the next generation of, of football fans and sports fans and giving them really what they, de- they desire. Definitely. It's a new model. It's something that's very interesting. It's something I think that is going to keep the fans coming um, because it, it almost gives them that sense of I'm involved. Absolutely. Uh, like you were alluding to, they're going to feel like, hey, I had some say. Um, and, you know, as, as a, a traditional football grown up, you know, being involved in that sport. I love that idea of being able to have some access and be involved and have some fan participation because it seems like some of the other leagues pretty much shy away from that. They don't want the fans to do anything but fill the seats. And for you guys to be doing what you're doing here, I think it's awesome. 
Um, I don't, thank you for coming on the show.